Hi and welcome to my tutorial on how to install the bulletin on your Windows machine. Uh, I'm actually using Windows 2003 for this demo. Uh, go ahead and install ZAMP. ZAMP is your first step to getting a server going on your Windows machine. ZAMP includes Apache, PHP, and MySQL. I'm using version 1.72. This is a free distribution. I don't have a server that I would like this to be, so I'm going to create a server at the root called Web Server and go ahead and click install. This will take about five minutes, so I'm going to just pause. Okay, it's just about done. I'll prompt us for a DOS prompt. Here it goes. And here I just accept all the defaults. Of course, it's not showing me the question, but here we go. So I'll go ahead and accept all the defaults by just pressing enter. And then I'm going to choose one, which is uh, start the ZAMP control panel. Once that's started, then you don't really need to do anything else with the com command prompt. Here I'm going to go ahead and start Apache. And I will go ahead and start MySQL. While I'm in here, I'm going to go ahead and open the PHP My Admin tool by clicking on Admin. Okay, so I'm going to turn this stuff off. I'll show this message again. And I'm going to go ahead and create a user here by clicking on Add New User. And we'll do the bulletin host. I'm going to say localhost. Password. I'll go ahead and generate a password. And this generated password I will copy. Open Notepad. Control V, put it in there for now, and I'm just going to minimize that for now. And I'm going to click on down here where it says create a database with the same name and grant all privileges to that database. So we'll click OK. We'll check by clicking on the databases tab and just double check in here. Yes, vBulletin user was created and gave it all privileges. So we're done with this piece of it. Um, let's go ahead and go into the XAMPP because here's something else that you should do while you're in the browser window. Go ahead and go to the all your language. Uh, it's English for me. And then I will click on security. And then click on the ZAMP security. Now here you're assigning a password to the root, like your admin of MySQL. Um, so I assigned a password. And same thing down here for this, this web page that people can make changes. Go ahead and assign a user ID that you won't forget and a password to that. And now whenever you come to this website, you'll be prompted. And those are the only things we need to do in here. So I'm going to close this out. And now we can go ahead and install vBulletin. Um, I'll go to my extracted vBulletin install. Go ahead and select all. And we'll copy this. And then we need to go all the way down. I just start at the root of C and go to the web server, ZAMP, htdocs. That's right there. That's like your public HTML directory. Um, you can actually paste vBulletin under a subdirectory called forums. And so it would be yoursite.com slash forums. And then it would open vBulletin. For me, I actually want it to be right at the root. So when I go to mywiseguys.com, it would be just vbulletin. So we're going to go and put it at the root. And now we need to configure it. So we're going to go into the includes directory and there's a config php.new right here. We need to take the new part off and just make it config.php and open up that with wordpad or if you have another editor you prefer that's, that's fine. Just as long as it's not notepad because it's messy with notepad. Okay yeah. I have it open in WordPad. First thing we have to change is the database name. The database name we gave it was vBulletin. The prefix, I like to actually put like VB for vBulletin with an underscore, and then it'll be all the table names after that. Um, you can change your um, username if you prefer. I don't at this moment. And then go ahead and assign the, not assign, but put in the username that you
that you assigned in the password. Well, I don't remember what the password is, but luckily I copied it over here. So I don't need this anymore. Paste it there. Okay, now we're done editing config.php. So go ahead and save. And another thing we need to change is the php.ini file. So go ahead and go up to the PHP directory under XAMPP and scroll down to php.ini and find display errors. Right next. Okay, it, see on is for development or broad, free broad, but for production we want it to be off. And another setting we need to change is the um, uploads limit. Um, by default it's 128 megs. Um, I have larger files than that. So I'm going to go up to 700 megs. And that should do it. I'm going to save php.ini and we're done with those edit edits. I'm going to minimize this for now. We're going to go ahead and launch the install. So we're going to go to http colon slash slash localhost install install.php Okay, when it comes up, it comes up with this uh, enter your customer number. I'm going to go ahead and enter my customer number that I got from vBulletin when I purchased my product. And then go ahead and click enter install system. And then we'll both be at the next screen. So, one moment. Okay, now we're in uh, the next screen. So it says next step, uh, one of 13. So really, all you have to do is click on next step pretty much through this whole thing. Uh, it says config file exists and is readable. Connection succeeded to the database. See, it creates the VB underscore and then the table name. Next, VB underscore session. Create all those. VB underscore admin. Adds all the default data. Import a language. Okay, that's okay. Master style. Okay. Importing admin help. Okay. Now here you can actually edit this stuff, like BB title of the board. You can also change this stuff later. I'm going to just say telecom forums. And that's, that's all I'm going to change right now. You probably want to change this to be your domain name. I'm just going to proceed at the moment. Next. And then here you assign yourself a username or an admin name, if you will. go ahead and we installed everything now we need to go into uh, let's get out of PHP go into HT docs that's our like our public HTML folder again you go under install and you find the install.php file and you get rid of it otherwise it won't come up now we click here and now we should be able to log into the back end with the ID we created Okay, now we're on the back end, so let's go ahead and check the front end, make sure that the users can see something. Yep, alright, so now we have vBulletin installed. Um, you'll look at uh, the next session, and my next session is actually on how to configure some things, like say the logo, how to change the logo, as well as install a module. I'm a big fan of the Download 2 module for our download manager and also start FileZilla for your FTP server. Uh, that's all in the part two of eBulletin. This was brought to you by My Wise Guys. I hopefully you enjoyed it, and please rate it. Thanks, bye.